to have you here today. So this session is around uh, Autosleep. Um, Autosleep is a new service, a new open source service that we have developed to automatically suspend inactive application after a given amount of uh, idle duration. And then it gets restarted automatically when there is incoming traffic. So let me introduce myself. I'm working at Orange. Those that, for those that don't know, Orange is one of the largest telco operator in, um, in Europe and in Africa. It's present in 24 markets with more than 240 million subscribers. And here is the Autosleep team. So um, I'm working as the uh, product manager on this project, and Benjamin and Arno are the, the developers. They could not be here today, so I'm representing the whole team. Um, so let's start with um, why would Autosleep be interested uh, to you? Uh, why would you care? And maybe we can do a short poll on uh, how much of you are not yet using Cloud Foundry. Pretty much, oh, just a few, okay. Who are more on the service consumer side, so pushing apps and operating apps? Okay, and so I assume the rest of you are operating Cloud Foundry. Uh, keep, keep your eyes, uh, your end raised if you're on-prem. Okay, most of you, and public. Just a few, okay. So, um, Autosleep will help you save money, um, hopefully. And for those of you that operate um, public cloud foundry instances or private, uh, you might as well do good for the planet and uh, save some computing power and uh, avoid getting the global warming worse. So let's detail that a little more. So for, we, we'll, we'll go through service consumers and uh, service providers. So for service consumers, um, Autosleep can be deployed both on-prem, uh, on private controlled instances and public. So those application teams, uh, they would get uh, their application automatically stopped. So the total app duration for the app would be smaller. So they would have a smaller invoice at the end of the, of the month. So you would save cash. For platform providers, um, you'd be able to uh, handle the same load, the same workload for your application teams, but with um, a smaller number of um, DA cells, a DIGO cells on um, DA, um, so you'd be able to shut down some ZM and uh, shut down the associated hypervisor, so to save some RAM. And some service provider might be able to use this to provide some free or cheap tiers uh, because it's more, more affordable you need less computing power to run uh, some, some applications. You might ask um, what kind of a workload would that be suitable to run against Autosleep? So we think immediately about non-prod, um, but how much is non-prod? Is that very a small proportion or is that large? It's hard to get figures, precise figures on that. Um, fortunately, um, so I tried, but I didn't find that much except a friend at Rakuten uh, that published um, their proportion. In their case, it's 44% uh, non-prod. So you can think, especially in the early adoption phase of Cloud Foundry, that should be significant. So what, what, what's in non-prod? Um, maybe the hello words and the tutorials that every newcomer comes in, they push the hello words and they forget about stopping those apps. So this would obviously benefit from Autosleep. Uh, Akathons and Spike, one-shot apps that you develop and you forget about stopping would be a good candidate. We had actually, in Orange, a um, specific case, we need to host some API stop for a wide range of APIs just to discover the APIs and get some um, uh, stop response. So that was one motivation we had. Uh, some other use cases include uh, saving docs or tools and obviously, um, um, non-prod version of all the apps we are deploying on Cloud Foundry would benefit from that. They don't need to be up any, uh, all of the time. They could be started on demand when traffic comes in. Would that also fit some production workload? It's not yet clear um, because there is still a penalty impact, in, uh, latency impact when the app is, uh, is waking up. Depending on the technology, the app might take some seconds to 30 seconds to start. So the production workload needs to be able to cope with that. Maybe some service brokers that could um, 
response within 90 seconds could be eligible, but uh, maybe the community will find some example of uh, production traffic that would be suitable. Okay, so how do you use um, hotel sleep to save RAM and to do good for the planet? Let's see that. So Autosleep is exposed as a service broker so that it's discoverable in marketplace. And um, once an app is enrolled with um, Autosleep, it would get stopped automatically on, upon inactivity and then waken up automatically when there is uh, back some traffic. So, um, so this is a work in progress. I'll detail the status on that. And as detail is on each of the points a bit. So for the um, exposition of service broker, we need an app to be enrolled. Um, um, so an app enrolled would be uh, managed by the auto, the, the auto sleep. Um, so to enroll an app, we, we bind it to an auto sleep service instance, basically. And there is different enrollment mode. Um, the first is regular opt-in. So a user comes in, uh, create a service instance in the space, and then bind its app to this service instance. But you might think if the user um, stop about, uh, forget about stopping their app, would they think about binding uh, to the auto-sleep to save RAM? So we also support auto-enrollment, um, so a second mode, um, in which every application within the space will be automatically enrolled. And this would be make it um, um, noticeable by user because the application will be bound automatically to this auto sleep service instance. They can still opt out. So to opt out, they can unbind from the service instance, meaning I don't want to go to sleep anymore. Um, stop uh, dealing with my app. Or they could name their app uh, against a regular expression exclusion pattern uh, to escape from my auto environment. In some case, um, we want to prevent some team to escape from auto sleep. For example, in the case of free tiers or cheap tiers, uh, we want to make it harder for them to, to consume more, but we still want them to be able to work effectively. So in this forced enrollment mode, they would be able to opt out, but only temporarily, only for a short amount of time. And then the app would be re-enrolled automatically. Uh, we have a dashboard to check the enrollment, the enrollment status and the idle duration. And then the app is stopped uh, on an activity. So the activity is measured um, by the logs that the application produce and the logs that uh, the Go router produce for the app. So any traffic uh, receiving, received from the app would keep the app active. CF events would as well uh, contribute to um, the activity measured. So if you update an app environment variable, or you scale it, that's um, evidence that uh, you have activity on your app, so the app is not considered inactive. Um, and then the auto waking up um, and sleeping app when uh, incoming traffic comes in. So while the app is uh, starting up, we currently return a for free status code um, to the application. We'll see after that. Um, we, we, we have planned to improve that. So let's go with, um, with the demo. I don't really trust my ability to do a demo with jet lag, so I recorded the demo. You have to trust me that uh, it works the same way. Yeah. Okay. So I have split my screen into four parts. On the upper left, I have uh, some uh, sample application. I hope you are able to read. So active app, hello world, and production no sleep. Uh, and I'm sending some traffic in um, a, a curl loop um, every one second. And on the uh, lower right, um, I will be deploying auto sleep. So, this is a regular Java application. Um, so it's, uh, it's pushed using the Java build pack. As per it requires uh, a cloud controller account with permission to act on the application in every space and uh, a MySQL database. So it's uh, two parts in auto sleep, the auto wake up and the um, auto sleep broker. 
So this is a push for auto wake up. So nothing special around that. And then the push about uh, the broker. And then we will um, define a wildcard route that would help us uh, restart the application, catch that, uh, restart the application when there is traffic coming in. So we create a wildcard route for any of the domain to which the enrolled app are, are mapped to. And we map this uh, wildcard route to the auto wake up. So auto wake up app will receive any orphan traffic sent to those routes. So when a stop app um, um, receive some tra should receive some traffic, the auto wake up would receive the traffic instead. So let's then expose this in the marketplace. So I'm deploying on uh, Pivotal Web Service, public cloud foundry, so I'm using a space code. And now we have the auto slip uh, appear in the marketplace. Cool. So we've seen how to deploy um, auto slip. So let's now use it. So we'll create a service instance in this uh, space. So that's the second space, the space where my app are, are deployed. And as arbitrary param to the auto slip uh, create service instance, I'm passing the idle duration, how much time, number of seconds. So the PT 20 seconds. After 20 seconds of inactivity, the app would go to sleep. An exclusion pattern and the enroll, enrollment mode. So let's start with standard. And let's ignore the secret for now. I should have removed that, actually. So OK, it's refreshed on the upper left. So I see my auto sleep service instance. And soon I should see two applications that would uh, automatically be bound. Um, yeah, so active app and hello world and no bound. And production no sleep was not bound because it's covered by the exclusion regular expression. OK. So what about uh, stopping sending some traffic? Or maybe we'll have a look at the dashboard before. Yeah. So let's have a look at the dashboard. So this plays the dashboard URL, opened up in a, a web browser. Oh, sorry. So the dashboard will tell us which apps were unrolled. It reminds us of the idle duration configured that the user might not know. It might be an admin that created the auto sleep service instance. So they can check the idle duration. They can check the uh, exclusion pattern. And they can see those two apps being unrolled. And for troubleshooting purposes, they can check which last logs were collected and the last um, Cloud Foundry events associated to their apps. So basically checks that the activity measured for the app is consistent with what they expect. So let's stop the loop which is keeping the app up. So I'm not sending traffic anymore to Hello World. So I should see Hello World within 20 seconds stop. Uh, I have to mention, and in this case, um, this is a very simple app uh, for the sake of this demo. Yeah, uh, it's um, the static build pack, so they are starting pretty quickly. Um, we'll see that afterwards. So, hello world, is that stopped yet? Yeah, stopped now. Cool. And the dashboard reflects the same thing. So, we'll, we'll do the same thing with Active App. I'm stopping traffic for Active App, and it should go stopped. Yes, I can mention as well that we are still lacking authentication on the dashboard. So that's part of our backlog to authenticate dashboard so that we don't leak sensitive information on it, including the logs. Could be an issue. Yeah, so active app is also stopped. Cool. So let's just try to have those apps wake up. So let's send some traffic back again to Hello World. So it's going to take some seconds, one, two seconds because it's a static build pack. It's just an Nginx process. It's pretty quick. Yeah. So um, the auto wake up application with the traffic and started the Hello World app. Let's do the same thing with the active app. Yeah, it started again. Cool. 
Okay, so maybe we can have a look at the opt-out. Let's try to opt-out. Let's say um, this is uh, getting in my way to do my work. I don't want Autosleep to manage any more active app. Uh, so I'm opting out, I'm unbinding. And if I stop sending some traffic for, okay, I unbound. If I stop sending some traffic for uh, this app, uh, it, it will not start up anymore. So yeah, the dashboard is reflecting that uh, the app is excluded from, it's not enrolled anymore, it's ignored, and uh, it doesn't stop. Cool. So um, we've seen um, deployment for now, uh, auto-enrollment. I think we'll have a look at um, the first enrollment now. Um, so what I'll do now is that I will unbind the rest of the apps and I will delete the service instance. And I will start with a fresh, a new scenario. Okay, so it's inbinding at a world and deleting the service instance in sequence. Cool. And now we look at the forced enrollment mode, which is typically for a free or cheap tiers. So in this case, I'm only changing um, the enrollment mode and I'm passing that to forced. And what I'm telling, uh, um, I'm also providing a secret. This, this secret is used by the autoslip. Um, typically in this use case, an admin would create a uh, autoslip service instance and the team uh, using the space wouldn't have access to this secret uh, so that um, uh, they are not able to switch back to standard environment. Um, so um, we've seen that those two apps, active app was auto bound and uh, I'm simulating the case where a team wants to escape from auto sleep so they try to opt out. So they do opt out for a short period of time but they automatically get uh, re-enrolled after a short duration. So basically they cannot escape long from uh, auto sleep. What it, we, we need to leave them the ability to unbind because they might want legitimately to delete their app. If they want to delete their app, the CLI would unbind the service. So if we were to refuse the unbind, uh, we would enable them to delete their app. So that's why we find this solution about uh, letting them to temporarily um, unbind. If they try to delete the service instance, um, it tells that in forced enrollment mode, they cannot delete and they have to switch back to standard. To switch back to standard, you need to provide the secret. So if an admin doesn't want um, a team to go back to, st to standard mode, it keeps the secret um, secret. So let's do that. Um, the admin is switching back to standard enrollment mode by providing the secret. And now the team uh, would be able to uh, opt out and delete the service instance to delete the space, for example. If I'm lucky enough, yeah, we don't see right in this comment. Should have not mirrored my screen. Sorry about that. Okay. Cool. So that's about it for the demo. Uh, let's switch back to slides. So, um, what is also sleep? Uh, what, it, what component is it uh, made of? Let's look, uh, let's look at the architecture. So it's split into, as we've seen in the deployment, in two parts: uh, the auto sleep core. Uh, which is exposing a service broker and a dashboard UI, and the wake-up proxy. Um, by the way, the slides are on SCED, sched.org, where you see the schedule, so you can have access to them right now if you want. Um, so when um, uh, an admin creates a service instance, um, um, the autoslip core is receiving um, the message, and then using the Cloud Foundry API, it's scanning the apps in the space, binding them automatically, then fetching their logs to check activity, 
and after the idle duration, you would stop the app. Once an app is stopped, um, it doesn't receive traffic anymore, so the traffic that are directed to this route would go to the wildcard route that we have configured and bound to the auto wake up proxy. And so the auto wake up proxy receives this offhand traffic from the Go router and would start the app. Once the app is started, it releases uh, the request that was um, received. Um, if there is um, other requests in between, we currently return a, four or three, a 503. In the, in the future, we plan to buffer all this traffic so that there is less impact for the sleeping applications. And both are sharing states using MySQL DB. So originally, we, we were thinking, we were designing to use route services instead of wildcard proxy. You might have seen that into um, uh, the session abstract. Unfortunately, we discover a bit late that it's not feasible currently. The route services uh, don't receive traffic when they are uh, mapped to an app which is stopped. So um, this is, um, uh, th there was discussion with, uh, with Shannon, the PM of the routing project, um, to explain this. Uh, so if you do have some similar use case, please voice it to Shannon so that this can help prioritization uh, to prioritize this support. Um, which is uh, not yet in the roadmap and might help some other use cases. There are quite a lot of advantages to go with root services instead of wildcard root. Um, maybe I can detail those a little more after if I get some remaining time. Um, so wildcard root is feasible for now. It's not idle, but um, at least it's working for now until we get this feature prioritized by um, the routing team. So what are potential future improvements we are thinking of? Um, we do need to harden the auto wake-up part um, so that it's able to scale, um, to install it as a cluster. Um, we'd like to queue traffic during restart so that it's really transparent to uh, the clients. They would see a delay in response, but they wouldn't see some extra 503 status, especially when you're saving API. Um, they, they don't like very really much to get some uh, extra status. Uh, we'd like to work on um, high availability and load balancing um, for the service broker itself. Uh, I mentioned authentication to the dashboard and checking permission. We are considering packaging as a Bosch release and a PCF tie so that it can use, be used anywhere. Um, we have some, uh, some teams working uh, considering PCF as well, so that'd be useful for them. Uh, what would be nice is to be able to have um, any application in any space and any org being automatically enrolled. Currently, an admin needs to create a service instance in uh, one, each space. So that would be a nice feature to um, have auto-enrollment for any space and uh, org within a Cloud Foundry instance. Um, another stuff might be to have more fine grain policy for auto sleep, such as excluding the business hours and potentially new notifying users when the application is put to sleep with the, um, an email notification. <coughs> so some learnings uh, that we made during this, um, this project. So we find the service broker um, create, read, update, uh, regular life cycle is, is very powerful. Um, but it's sometimes restrictive in terms of user experience. We have to tweak a bit. You've seen the, uh, to switch from standard to forced enrollment mode, to switch with um, arbitrary param into the update, so that's kind of a, a awkward user experience. We are heavily relying on the CF Java client for this, uh, for this service. So um, there is an ongoing re-implementation using Reactive uh, it's great. Uh, thanks for Ben Hell uh, teams for, for this. It's really solid. It's been distracting for us because it's stretched over time in terms of um, calendar. So um, we might have picked V1 uh, if we had better visibility on roadmap initially. But otherwise, it's really a great effort. And I know Benjamin has been contributing quite a while to it. And yes, I discovered, I discovered a bit late the constraints about reading service. Um, so you know it now. In terms of suggestions, um, 
Um, I made some suggestions for enhancement to the service broker API. So one first suggestion is to be able to propagate the identity of the caller. So if we were able to know that um, it's an admin that is um, requesting to delete a service instance, then we would um, uh, grant this request, where our space manager uh, we would uh, refuse. So both being able to propagate the request to identity and as well, its uh, permission is OAuth scopes. And maybe to have this requester delegate his permission so that we don't need um, a Cloud Foundry account which has permission on all space, but the user could delegate their permission for the autoship to act on their behalf. So there is proposal spec around this. I can have a look. Another proposal is to um, Try to find a way so that it's easier to get custom UI for our services. So one interesting idea that was suggesting, suggested by Ben Laplanche is the service broker actions. Basically to have the service broker in its catalog return some metadata that describes some additional verbs that it would like to expose to users. So in this example, a bit small to see maybe. Um, uh, it, um, there is a new uh, action that is declared by this broker, set mode, and the CLI would um, propose these actions to the users uh, built in without um, deploying a custom plugin. Another way that we can provide custom UI for, for services is by providing a custom plugin, but this currently also requires users to install it. So maybe another suggestion could be that the CLI, um, by interpreting some metadata into the catalog, um, in this metadata you would have the, the repository endpoint and the name of the plugin, and it would automatically prompt the user into installing this custom plugin from this service, so that the user doesn't have to follow the doc to find the right plugin. So in terms of user experience, it would be maybe um, more flexible because you can define some uh, top commands in this, in this context. Okay, so let's wrap up. Um, so yes, yeah, this is a work in progress. This is open source. It's on, uh, on GitHub. So please test it. Tell us what you think. Uh, report some bugs. We, we had already a number of, uh, of uh, announcement suggestions and, uh, and feedback. If you have new ideas as well, and ever best if you have um, um, ability to, co to contribute to enhancement, that would be great. We hope as well that this could provide some inspiration for automating some tasks that um, platform providers can have um, and while keeping, um, providing some control for users to control this automation through exposing that as a service broker. So we needed to put the application to sleep and by exposing it as a service broker, we provided the ability to opt out and to configure the idle duration. So I think we have about maybe one minute. If there is question, comments that you have. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. <laughs>